I didn't really know what to expect, obviously, because all hush hush and stuff. Like it, we'd heard rumors about all the stuff it might or might not do, and it had this weird, you know, the earphones don't even touch your head. How's that going to be? Um, it's pretty slick. The bits that were finished, the exposed circuit board was also kind of amusing. It looks really good and it sounds great. These headphones are awesome. So we started talking to Valve about what would be a good sort of onboarding experience for Knuckles. And so Aperture Labs always, in early VR demos, that was like an ideal place to be highly experimental. The first thing we had to do was kind of break down what makes stuff in the Aperture universe look the way it does. So we started analyzing those games, taking a look at what the aesthetic is, breaking that down. That's where we came up with the towers and that these racks come down and sort of deliver tests to these little stations. We kind of built up these separate personality cores that would drop in and they would each kind of walk you through a different kind of handshake or a different gesture you had to do and interact with them. And then we took the extra step deeper and we started talking about the what ifs. You know, what if a player does this? What if a player does that? How did the cores respond? If you walk away from any of the characters or if you finger any of the characters, you know, uh, during the rock, paper, scissors section, if you throw like, you know, the devil horns or something, they're going to react to that. And we wanted to put in all these different affordances for the different ways players could kind of, you know, mess things up. We asked Valve for some assets from the Portal universe. As fans of Valve and as artists, that was sort of like Christmas. Look at all their, uh, their textures and their models and see Peabody and Atlas in there. I got to use some of their sound effects and actually get to beef them up for the new generation, you know, make them binaurally processed for VR. And it was kind of like cracking open a, an archive or going into a museum and, and being able to ogle these things that you've kind of cherished for so long in real life. But you yeah. let go of it a little bit, loosen your grip, then the stick bends when you hit an object, right? You know, we had this kind of little mini handbook we developed for a number of different funny interactions that might exist in the Aperture universe. And that got passed around at Valve and everybody kind of had some buy-in into different things. It was really cool to get Jay and Eric to come and visit us here in the studio and meet those guys in person. Seeing them work and seeing them banter and bounce ideas off each other, uh, and not just that, but collaborating with them and coming up with ideas together as a team. I think the strangest moment for me was when we were presenting ideas to Jay and Eric about things we wanted to do that seemed kind of wacky and like maybe not so much in the Portal universe and we were a little nervous about it and they came back at us with ideas that were like way way crazier than the ones that we had even come up with. You're getting at the head aren't you? The giant robotic head. We had a we had a giant scary head that uh, you had to feed through a, through a food cannon. And the first time I saw that come out of this giant black hole and yell at me, it was, it was, that was pretty memorable. None of that shit made it into the game. <laughs> we didn't really know what exactly what interactions we were gonna have at first, because like with anything in VR, it's not known. Like there's potential for stuff to go amazingly well that you didn't think was gonna be very good or, or terribly that you thought was gonna go great, so. Find like three basic personality types and they're, you can make a joke, but there's only three different types of human, right? right? We're going to introduce you to them. We knew that people would fire up the demo and the first thing they would do would be to look at their hands. The opportunity to make cool robot hands mm. is always one you're gonna take. If you think about just how your hand moves, and how much leniency your muscles and skin give you. Like our joints sort of all act as ball joints, but robotic joints are all kind of hinges and pistons and all sorts of stuff. I had to create systems that would detect the motion of each joint of the fingers and translate that into uh, you know, different servo sounds to make it feel like you're actually driving these, these robot hands. We had kind of stood up the, the flow for the different personality cores and the different types of hand gestures that you would do with each and every one of them. And when Jay and Eric came in, they added a ton of comedy to each of the cores and, and how they interacted with you. Been hearing a lot of good things about your hands back at the head office. The one that I laugh at the most is the boss core with the handshake simulations. And having that thing 
in the scene reaching out and you could grab the hand and move it around and you could watch the whole IK chain work its way back up to the base of the arm. And then of course the first time that we got proper VO back from Valve and had it hooked up to the personality core with the lights going off and stuff. and That was the first time that it was like, okay, this is cool, we're making a Valve game. Like, what is the gameplay of Knuckles? What is the gameplay of these index controllers? Oh, it's a gameplay of real life. The thing that's different with the index controllers is that paper is just opening your hand and scissors, well, scissors is scissors, right? So it's more about like just how natural these these things are that would have been re represented with an abstracted button press or something previously. As a result of that, there's a lot of subconscious player expression that, that you can interpret and pull into gameplay that, that where before you'd have to rely on a willful choice that a player makes. What's most interesting to me is that Valve is pushing on the edges of a VR 2.0 type of product and ecosystem. And it's kind of hitting a sweet spot for, for me personally where I'm starting to forget about the headset. So Knuckles, not, not having to touch them or hold them um, if I don't want to, they're, they start to slip away. They don't exist anymore for me. All of the systems and all of the features that they built into the headsets and the controllers are culminating in something that makes you ultimately just feel more grounded and present in the experience. And at the end of the day, that's all that really matters in VR. Do I feel present? Do I feel connected? Do I feel like I'm there? It was just such a it was such a joy to work in in that franchise. I already said this as a fanboy. Um, I, I would love to revisit that universe again someday.